What's up, YouTube? Maven here, and welcome to the first of many Lost Caverns of Ixalan Pioneer gameplay videos here on the channel. If you are new here, just found the Pioneer, or just found this channel with the new season of Pioneer here, welcome in. We do Pioneer every single Friday and Modern every single Monday. And of course, we're messing around with a lot of the new Lost Caverns of Ixalan cards in these formats. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. And today, we're kicking off the new season of Pioneer with Roaming Throne Humans. So Roaming Throne is a new card. It's a four mana, four, four, ward two, so it's hard to kill. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It is the chosen creature type in addition to its other types. And whenever a triggered ability happens of a creature you control of the chosen type, it triggers an additional time. So I thought to myself, what pioneer tribal archetype has a lot of triggered abilities? Of course, humans. So let's take it from the top. Hopeful initiates has the training trigger. So that can trigger an additional time. Uh, when it attacks the creature with greater power, it gets a 1-1 counter. So it will get two 1-1 counters. I believe that's how it works. Even if, um, I don't think you need to attack with two creatures of bigger power than it for it to trigger twice. I think you trigger it one time, say you attack along with a Thalia or something, it should get two counters, I believe. And then Kyphion, it's not going to transform twice or whatever, but yeah, it's just there as a singleton because we needed more one drops. Same with Recruitment Officers, there just to be a one mana two power human. Luminarch Aspirant and Siege Veteran are going to be some of the big things to pair with Roaming Throne here. Uh, at the beginning of combat, you get to put a counter on target creature. Being able to trigger that two times with Roaming Throne is going to be pretty awesome. But another thing is that Siege Veteran makes it so whenever a non-token soldier dies, create a soldier. That is another triggered ability. And we do have a lot of soldiers in here, such as Siege Veteran itself, Recruitment Officer, Kytheon, Thalia, Thalia's Attendant, so on and so forth. And I believe Adeline as well. Uh, Adeline's a knight. Ossification is there just to be a removal spell. Dolly is there to disrupt non-creature based decks. Dolly as a tenant is another awesome triggered ability. ETB, we're gonna put two counters and everything. And whenever another human enters, we get two counters on Dolly as a tenant. That is gonna be awesome. Can't wait to have that happen with the Roaming Throne. Brutal Cathar, ETB trigger, exile target creature. So we're gonna exile two creatures. But then also there's another trigger when, um, when uh, this creature transforms back into Brutal Cathar from being a Moon Rage Brute, you get to exile another two creatures. So that's going to be cool. And Adeline, at the beginning of combat, or when you attack, for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one, tapped and attacking human. So we're going to create two uh, tapped and attacking humans. So that's just going to be awesome as well. 23 total lands. Typically, the human decks play around 22 or 21 lands, but since we're running a set of four drops, I thought I'd throw in an extra land there. Got Muta Vaults, a Gonjo's Castle, Arden Veils onto the sideboard here. We got Devony Silence for the Is It decks. We got, and also for the um, Lotus Field decks. And then we got Portable Hole to deal with cheap little aggro decks. We got Containment Priest to deal with, um, I forget exactly what this is for, but at the very least, it can deal with um, Domino Creativity. And then we have Rest in Peace for Graveyard Decks. We got another copy of Brutal Cathar in case we need to exile some creatures. We got a couple copies of Raiden. This just can be good against a lot of stuff, but also control. And we got four copies of Wedding Announcement, which is just a staple in human sideboards to combat very um, attrition-like decks like Rakdos and whatnot with a lot of removal. And that's about it. Now, moving on. We're going to get right onto the gameplay, but first, before we do, as usual, we give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to TCGplayer.com, the best marketplace on the internet. They have the Magic the Gathering singles, sealed products, accessories, anything you want. And um, stock up on Lost Caverns of Ixalan stuff there if you haven't already. Check them out in the deck list link down below or the TCG Player link down below. Anything you purchase through those links will help support the channel. And then finally, shout out to our... Uh, or shout out to Mana Traders next for making it possible to do YouTube. I'd never be able to buy all the decks I play every single Monday and Friday for YouTube because that would cost a fortune. So I use Mana Traders for an affordable month monthly fee. They allow you to rent and play all the decks you want to play on Magic Online. So if you want to play Magic Online but don't want to spend a fortune, you should check out Mana Traders in the link down below with the code for 10% off. And finally, shout out to our Patreon supporters, all these people here, for helping to support this channel and make it possible for me to do for a living. Y'all are the real MVPs. If you want to go the extra mile and supporting the channel as well, Patreon link down below. And now let's get on to the gameplay. Leave your predictions. What is our record going to be? I'm going to say 
that we're going to go five and oh or four and one it's going to be between four and oh and five and one for me because it's humans like you can't really do bad with humans like even though we do have a set of four drops that could potentially be stuck in our hands sometimes i think it's still going to be broken because it's humans but then also another thing is that um it's a very one drop light humans deck typically human decks have more one drops and we only have um we only have eight one drops, so I feel like there's going to be some hands where we don't have a one drop play, and that's going to make us a little bit too slow. So that's one thing that I'm also fearing. Now, there's a lot of other humans out there that got some cool triggered abilities, but it's just I couldn't fit them all into this deck. It would have been awesome to, but I just couldn't fit them in. Like, uh, there was another one drop that had a... Um, a triggered ability like Boros Elite. It was Boros Elite and also Haas the Marshal. Uh, they have battalions. So when you attack with two other creatures, they do a thing. So you can like, Haas the Marshal makes a 1-1 one, one human or a 1-1 one, one soldier token. And then Boros Elite gets plus 2 plus 2. So imagine that being doubled up and getting plus 4 plus 4. But I feel like that was too late in the game. You know, it's a 1 drop. Roaming Throne's a 4 drop. I feel like that'd be too late in the game. All right, um, this is going to be a keep. What's up, little 1K? Cavernous Souls. Oh, yeah, didn't Cavernous Souls just get reprinted in this set? I forgot. Yeah, that could probably go in here. But we do want a good amount of planes for um, the sake of, you know, uh, ossification. But I could see sacrificing a few planes to get Cavernous Souls in here. That'd be a good idea, but I just completely forgot that it was in reprinted in a standard set now. But yeah, that could definitely go in here. Good call. I'll probably have to put that in the pinned comment. So this is what I was talking about. I don't have a turn one play, so I may be a little slow against things like spirits, you know? But they did mulligan. So maybe that could help. Supreme Phantom, I definitely want to just ossification that right off the bat here. Try to deal with all their aggression. Make them brick, potentially. So Botanical Sanctum, that tells me they're going to have Coco, which is a little bit spooky. Holding up three mana could be Lofty Denial. I'm not going to play around it, though. So I think I will just throw Adeline. It's whenever you attack. So maybe I just throw Brutal Cathar and get them to counter that. But I feel like Brutal Cathar is more valuable, potentially. So I'll throw out Adeline here. Here comes Lofty Denial. No Lofty Denial. All right, so Roaming Throne's going to copy up that trigger and give me two humans. It's going to be awesome. Rattle Chains. So good thing I didn't Brutal Cathar. <laughs> I can take the upkeep stop off now. The modern deck we played um, that I uploaded on Wednesday, actually, not Monday. I usually upload Modern on a Monday, but, you know, the set just came out on Tuesday, so the Modern video this week went up on Wednesday. Um, I had that upkeep stop there because we were playing Fire and Ice. All right, I think it is time for Roaming Throne. And then if Roaming Throne sits, next turn, Brutal Cathar exiles two creatures. Now, here's something that I was, um, if, okay, so if Brutal, if the Daybound ability said if a player casts no spells during the next turn, it becomes night next turn. If instead it said it transforms next turn, then that'd be broken with Roaming Throne because it would transform and then another, another trigger on the stack would transform it back and it'd exile another two creatures. So that would be absolutely broken. All right, so name human here. Go to combat, attack, and get two humans. Grow my Adeline to be a 4-4. Four, four. That's so good. Roaming Throne is, is just going to be awesome for humans. I don't know if people are going to play it because it's a 4-drop. So I don't know if people in like sweaty, spiky players are going to be like, nah, it's a 4-drop, I don't want to play it. But it's actually legitimately a powerhouse. Like, look at this.
And it has ward too, so it's hard to kill. It's just excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And they just scoop it up. Just way too much coming out of the roaming throne there, and they just cannot deal with it. The fact that it has ward too is just such great icing on the cake. All right, so against uh, spirits, give me another brutal Cathar. Give me portable holes. And um, Raiden's a good blocker. It's a 2 3 flyer. But I don't think I'm going to bring it in. Um, so what are we cutting here? Thalia doesn't really stop anything in particular. If anything, it only slows us down. It could slow down um, Coco, but I'll cut one. And I'll cut one Siege Veteran. And cut one Recruitment Officer. All right, on the draw now. I'm pretty sure we played against K Chameleon in one of the recent weeks. Might have been last week, I don't remember. That's the haughty Jin, right? Yeah, that is haughty Jin. What does haughty mean? I don't have a basic planes for my ossification, but I do got one drop into double Luminarch Aspirant, and the moment I do find a planes, I can kill something, and then I got a roaming throne to look forward to. So I'll keep this. Mausoleum. It's a very aggressive start. Everyone you played against at your pre-release had roaming throat in their pool. It's so good, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy annoying. Dang it, I don't have a basic. Okay, so. I can put a counter here. And then next turn when I play another Luminarch Aspirant, I can just put two counters on this one and then attack, attack, and then I can trigger training. But this is going to be a tough race here because they got... The good start. They shock. Oh, that could mean... Okay, it's just another one of those. I was going to say that could mean Spell Queller. Portable Hole. Oh, that's also really good. Yikes. I really need a Planes. I really, really need a Planes. Dang it. And I always mention this whenever I play with 1-1 one -one counters, but 1-1 one -one counters is like my favorite mechanic in, in Magic the Gathering. I love 1-1 one -one counters. And just the fact that there's this really awesome synergy with Siege Veteran Luminarch with Roaming Throne is just so satisfying to me. I can't wait to see that happen today. Katilda as well. Yeah, I think this one's as good as over. I'm just going to scoop it up. They had the aggressive start and I got Mana Scourge, so... But now we're in the play. And we're running it back. Oh yeah, that's that's a start. The first two turns aren't as aggressive as I'd like them to be, but Adeline comes down. Starts making tokens. And roaming thrones coming up once I find one more land. All right, they got their good start. I did get my fourth land, that's good. Although I'm tempted to keep a Ganjo to like kill something, but I got to play my roaming throne if it's like my last resort there. All 
a dark car and supreme phantom they got the same aggressive start as last time it's tough it's tough all right ardenvale adeline looks like we can save a ganjo And uh, also, having that doubled up training trigger next turn is going to be just a punch in the face. It's going to be so good. So I think if I double up that, I need a creature with two power greater than this creature's power to get the double trigger. Pretty sure. Mausoleum, please just tap out. I don't want to deal with the lofty denial right now. I didn't put Cavern of Souls in. Okay, thank you. Oh no, Shacklegeist! That tapping down Adeline is gonna suck. That's not good. That is not good. Oh no, I'm gonna lose to Shacklegeist. Yep, they're tapping it down. That's a problem. That's a big problem. If only I had Copper Coat Vanguard in here. <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, throwing in a four drop like and another three drop in Siege Veteran. Copper coaches didn't make the cut. Dang it, they just keep having the cheap creatures so they can keep shackling stuff. This is really, really bad. They just, they're just going to attack for eight in the air at the mausoleums and just keep everything else to tap down my creatures. Dude, Shacklegeist is ridiculous and, and like a creature mirror. It's ridiculous. Why are they keeping three creatures up? You gotta keep either four or two. I need a haymaker right now. I need Thali as a tenant right now. Like Thali as a tenant would be huge. Thali as a tenant would be massive. I think that's my only avenue to victory, honestly. Oh my goodness. Okay. Activate Muta Vaults. Play a Planes. Activate Muta Vault and then play Thought Attendant. I mean, this doesn't really matter. Is it, I'm gonna lose next turn anyway, so it's like everything or nothing right here. Okay, we get two counters on everything. Please tell me this is enough for game. They tapped out Nataline here. Oh no, a fruit fly got in. They let me attack with everything. Okay, I get double training. My creatures are gonna get two counters each. They're huge. Okay, yeah, I think I think they realize that they need all the chump blockers. The always attendants getting four one one counters there. 
please tell me this is enough. So they chump Adeline, chump Throne, chump Hopeful. I think it's enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's definitely enough. Oh my goodness, stole it. Absolutely stole it with that top deck lieutenant. Let's go. Let's go, dude. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, we are 1 0. Good start. All right, Nibu89 is our second round opponent. Let's see what you got. So I've been playing all day because I just, you know, I streamed the modern deck and now I'm on Pioneer. So I've been playing for a few hours now and I have yet to see any of my opponent, my opponents play any new cards. I have yet to see a single new card. I want to see some new stuff. I'm going to keep this. Actually, I think uh, my Jund opponent from the Modern um, might have been playing a new card. That that Jund charm. I'm pretty sure it's an old charm, but it could be new. It could be mistaken. All right, so let's start on Kytheon. They start on a tap land or play hopeful. Oh, uh, no, I don't have double white for Adeline. Why? It's one of the sucky things. It's one of the sucky things about playing these Muta Vaults. Okay, the tapped one is a summoning sick. That's the newly controlled. So let's activate this Muta Vault and attempt to flip our Kytheon. Please flip. Please flip. If our Kytheon flips, I'm feeling good. If it doesn't, then I'm feeling pretty, pretty bad. Dang it. At least I get to train up my hopeful. So a teamer deck with Brazen Borrower, is it literally just a tempo mid-range deck? Ketria. Can I get my fourth land for Roaming Throne, please? Dolly's a tenant, okay. I could attempt to flip Kytheon again. Or I could just play Thar's a tenant. I'm going to I'm going to go Thar's a tenant. I think it's the safer play. They did have another Petty Theft anyways. So it's a good thing I went with this play instead of attempting the Kytheon again. Can't believe I'm getting color screwed in a monocolor deck. They gotta be playing a new card, right? All right, Brutal Cathar. Or some people would call it Cathar. All right, let's, let's go for the Kytheon flip here. And uh, let's throw out Hopeful to get a counter on Dolly's Attendant. And they got more interaction. Kozilex return. Okay, well, at least my Muta Vault lives. 
They're down to eight. I'm even a more land heavy humans deck than normal. Bro, what is happening? Let's attack for three again. Growth spiral. So they are literally just team or mid-range. Control tempo, go big mid-range. They're probably trying to ramp up into, oh, that. Okay, well, that works. So it's just team or flash. Okay, well, I have plenty of removal for that, so it's fine. So... Now I know to watch out for Frilled Mystic. Not that I can do anything about it because I don't have Cavernous Souls. But yeah, Frilled Mystic could be an issue. We can get definitely two for one by that card pretty easily. There's my white source. And there's the Frilled Mystic. All right. All right, I'll take seven. They make another wolf. Nightpack Ambusher is like the maker of flash decks. Like he's so good. All right, it's time for ossification. Eat the Ambusher. Try to trade off Recruitment Officer for Frilled Mystic. Or whatever we can, really. And then, hopefully, Roaming Throne comes down. Oh, and they even have Elder Deep Fiend. Cool. And it's a cool addition. All right, well, now, this time, we're not going to get Mana Screwed, so let's uh, go with... Um... See, Wedding Announcement is not terrible. Honestly, I think our deck's fine. We just leave it the same. Dolly's Attendant doesn't really counter much. So maybe we bring in instead Containment Priest. We can flash thing in on their turn so they can't make a wolf. Another Brutal Cathar maybe to like exile that wolf. Um, let's do Brutal Cathar over at Thalia. I guess Containment Priest does kill my own Adeline tokens. Double Thalia when I just said they're not that good in this matchup. All right. Getting a little bit unfortunate draws here. This one looks a little bit better. Um, I'll ditch an ossification and just keep my lands, try to work my way up to this roaming throne. But definitely getting pretty bad hands in this round. So I, I'm curious if the opponent's playing the new Viper card. Um, the... The adventure viper that is basically like another another copy of of uh, brazen borrower that can also like pay to and bounce a thing, but then it comes down as a, a piker that works off instance and sorceries right, so it doesn't really work too good with flash.
All right, is it colors? Pretty petty theft again. Well, now at least I can have the ability to get indestructible my Kytheon. Probably just gonna get bounced at the end step though. Yep, as expected. And now it's time for the potential counter magic. So they just were printed a they just printed a copy of a counter spell um in this new set that that is a copy of an old counter spell that doesn't really see play, but it should. It's like I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's three mana, counter a spell unless they pay four. But then it also has another option on it that you, it says choose one. You can choose either that, three drop blue instant, counter spell unless they pay four, or you can dig four deep and grab a card and put it in your hand. So it's basically impulse or counter a spell and that's amazing for a three drop like i can't believe that card doesn't see like doesn't see play regularly in pioneer because it seems amazing it's like pioneer's potential version of archmage's charm All right, Roaming Throne's going to be tough to deal with because it does have ward. However, that Night Pack Ambusher can flash in and block it. But would that be such a bad thing? Because that Night Pack Ambusher is a huge threat. So it'd be fine if I traded for that. All right. Let's attack for four. Um, Kyvia will just get frilled mystic'd, so I'm just gonna pass and make Ardenvale tokens. Ah, oh, they have petty theft. And now it's going to get countered on the way back down. Maybe I just don't play it. <laughs> Maybe I just don't play it. I could I could just go Kaivion and Thog's attendant and try to bait, you know. They're so gonna frilled mystic this. Whatever. They, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't counter it. All right. Dolly's tenant. Cause, what, what? Okay. Now my guy is bigger than, my guy won't die to a flash, uh, what do you call that guy? Elder Deep Fiend, so he he can live now. Good. Elder Deep Fiend's a five eight, right? Or is he a five five? I think he's a five eight. Okay, Kaifion, grow Thali's attendant by two.
and just hold up our and be like, they just scoop it up it's too much to deal with all right well got a little bit lucky there dodging the removal spells and um i think we'll just run it back wedding announcement would be nice to resolve against them since they're very counter heavy so maybe i bring in that and cut thalia Sure. I'm fine with that. Dahlia is not that great here. They're mostly just creatures, tempo creatures, not tempo spells. That's a one lander. Come on, man. We're a 23 land deck. We got mana screwed multiple times today. Okay, we'll keep that one and we'll ditch Cathar. Oh my goodness. Give me lands, please. Don't let this happen again. I've already lost a mana screw today. Not like this. Please, not like this. We're going to grow spiral in response, I believe. Yep. Rose Spiral is one of my favorite cards. I love it. Oh, no. All right, let's go for another lieutenant. But I'm not going to attack because I know they're just going to flash on the wolf and block. So let's just pass. Yep. That's like one of the best cards. <laughs> I love this card so much. And I was actually brewing up a, a Celestia flash deck with this card, which you may see in the near future in Modern. Because there we got a new flash creature in, in the new set. So look forward to this card being played on the channel pretty soon. Okay, um, I can ossification this. But I can also add a lean, which is massive. I think I just have to ossification. It's going to get countered, but then the next ossification can maybe resolve. I just got to get the dang wolf off the table. Okay, it worked. It worked. All right, I will attack with the 4 4 Thalia's Attendant because I do not mind trading with that wolf. Petty. Oh, no. They take it. Well... I can I can just do it again next turn. They attack with both. I'm gonna take it. I don't think it's worth the trade. I could double block that wolf, but it's not worth it since they have plenty of tempo. It could two for one me. I'm getting mana screwed. Well, we just got to do it again. And they have Elder Deep Fiend. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just scoop time. It's a 5-6, by the way. 
Um, yeah, it's probably scoop time. I think we're just dead there. Yeah, Xaxi's nine. That's unfortunate. Got mana screwed twice there. Can't really control that. It just happens in Magic the Gathering. It's just one of those factors of the game that you can't control. It's just like hacks in Pokemon, how you can't really control it. It's just RNG. Speaking of which, while we're waiting for an opponent, we could open up the Pokemon quiz and try to actually complete it on screen. Because remember, if it didn't happen on screen, if it wasn't recorded, then it never happened, right? But I did complete the Gen 5 Pokemon quiz with like seven and a half minutes left on the clock. Like, it's... That's my gen. It is my gen right there. My country. All right, I got it opened up and let's go. It's lagging like crazy. Oh my goodness, the lag. All right, Victini. Melo Etta. It's lagging like mad right now. Genesect. Keldeo. Terrakion. Verizion. Cobalion. Eurem. Zekrom. Reshiram. Volcarona. Larvesta. Thundurus. Tornadus Landorus. All right. Pause. Laster is our third round opponent. We're going to be in the play. And uh, this is very uneventful. This hand's only decent if the opponent plays a lot of creatures, which we can't guarantee if they are. But I think I take the risk and hope that they do play a bunch of creatures. What the heck is their avatar? I cannot see what's going on in this picture. Artwood Storyteller. All right. Okay, well, they don't have Yorion. Seeing a Thraben Inspector without Yorion is rare. Um, whatever, I'll put a counter here. I was going to start putting counters on, on just the Luminarch so I can train up. Train up the hopeful and get more value out of it that way. But I just want to have like two two power attackers next turn do a swing through the Thraven Inspector. Because whatever they play here, I'm just going to Brutal Cathar it. Never mind, I'm not going to Brutal Cathar that. That's a lot of Brutal Cathars. I guess I'm hitting the Thraven Inspector. Getting one less counter this way. Because if I had trained up my Luminarch Aspirant two times, or like put the counters here, I would have been able to train up there. So I could have had one more counter, but I just did that just to get in for two more damage last turn, which might have been greedy. All right, I really need to hit a land so I can start killing off these patchworks. Market Gnome. All right, that's a new card. Finally, we get to see a new card. Uh, when it dies, you gain a life and draw card, which is awesome, by the way. Okay, so I can swing here and here to like train up this, but then they can trade off Luminarch for Patchwork. Would I be okay with that? Probably not because I do have answers to these, so I just gotta wait to draw a land. Also, uh, hopefuls can um, hopefuls can remove two counters to kill an artifact or enchantment, which can be very useful here. Oswald Fiddlebender. So they're trying to uh, use Oswald to sack off the gnome to like go and fetch a thing. What is this card? Exile a creature in opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Sack an artifact of creatures. They can sack the gnome and exile my brutal Cathar. That's pretty awesome. I really like that. So you can have like experimental synthesizer type effects and whatnot. Maybe have servo schematic in there. I'd imagine they have servo schematics in there for, for those cards. 
Um, maybe they have um the the last moon's uh Th that four mana card, that new four mana card that makes it dwarf. But I have answers to that with Hopeful. Dude, please. Give me my lands. Okay, well, at least I can deal with Oswald before it goes and fetches things. Let's put a counter on Hopeful so that we can, like, remove the counters to kill off... Um, Either Dusk Rose or the, or the 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 last moons, whatever that. What is the four mana card? Does anybody in the chat remember the the new four mana uh, white card that is an artifact? And when it ETB, it makes a gnome with power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts and creatures you control. Because they're definitely playing that. Yeah, and Genius Smith. This is a deck that I, I'm actually was going to brew up. And I'll I'll definitely brew this up. This is cool. Cause I I had this written down to to brew. The four moons, the la the thousand moons, thousand moons something. It's called thousand moons something. Smithy, that's the one. Thousand moons Smithy. Spring loaded saw blaze is going to be in that deck too, and they found that. Okay, I finally got my land. But I think I still need to deal with Oswald, right? I could deal with the big patchwork, but I think I just got to deal with the Oswald. So I just kill off this. Oh, it has Ward 2. Start putting counters on the other one. The ocean frontliner. Portable hole. Can you stop removing things? You're going to deal with my Luminarch. All right, we'll take this hit. Adeline, all right, well, let's ossification now. I could attack, attack, and train up my hopeful, but I think I need to stay defensive here. I may need to actually chump with the, the small hopeful on this guy. Yeah, it looks like I do. But they're going to get trample on it. No! The opponent's drawing so well. Oh my goodness. Is this another new card? Not. All right, so five, six. <sighs> the mana screw's been getting me today, seriously. Lost this game to mana screw. Lost the last round to mana screw. Just what's going on? So I can kill off the Dusk Rose to get back my this guy to kill that, but I need to kill the I need to kill that. So it's just like a problem. I can ossification and kill that, but then but then they get to keep Oswald and get some nonsense.
Nope, I'm dead. That's unfortunate. Mana screwed. All right, well, they have a lot of artifacts and enchantments, so... Uh, well, I know I want to bring in Portable Hole here. And Brutal Cathar. And that's probably it. We can cut... Thalia. It doesn't look like it's going to be very helpful here. All right, this looks like we have a really good matchup here. We just need to um, not get mana screwed. Okay, that looks good. All right, Kaifion. Driven Inspector. Hopeful go. So I don't care if my recruitment officer dies because Siege Veteran will create a 1-1 one -one in its place. So it'll allow me to just swing all out next turn. I'll be able to train up this guy. But unfortunately, they drew a patchwork. But you know what? That's fine. If they want to double block Kaifion here, and also I would be getting a 1-1 one -one out of the deal, that's fine. So get a counter on Kaifion. They'd have to double block it. And I'm okay with trading with Patchwork and Thraben. That's fine. It makes a 1-1. One -one. And I flip my Kaifion. Let's go. It has a ward. I can't target that. I guess I untap this and it gains indestructible until my next turn. All right, a roaming throne would be awesome. If I can get that, I feel like we're in a very good spot. Ah, uh, portable hole. They have so much removal in there. Oh no, they deal with Gideon. Hopeful. All right, put a counter on Hopeful. <sighs> Is it worth trading off Hopeful? No, I can't even do that. Because I'd have to remove the counters. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, thank goodness. I was going to say, can you only activate it as a sorcery? But no, you can activate it anytime. So I'll just do that at the end step and kill the portable hole. But then again, maybe I wait until next turn, play a ganjo, and then I'll be able to actually kill off the patchwork automaton and pay, pay for it. And the stupid dusk rose. Come on, dude. They just have so much removal. Do I get back my Kaivion or do I wait and kill off Patchwork? I think I gotta wait and kill off Patchwork.
Adeline's nice. I guess I'm doing Adeline next turn. This ingenious Smith keeps growing, though, and it's annoying. Oh, I should have done this now. I should have done this now, because now they can sacrifice to... Okay, they can only activate as a sorcery. So I am going to do this now. Ward is so annoying. That's how the that's how the roaming throne is so annoying. Dude, what if you made like a patchwork automaton roaming throne deck and, and for constructs? That'd be kind of crazy because they both have wards, so it'd just be a very annoying resilient deck. And then you could also have like Arcbound Ravenger and stuff. All right, Adeline, Luminarch. They'll double block, right? No, they're not going to double block. So put a counter on the soldier token so I can train up the hopefuls. All right, so now a roaming throne would be pretty great. It would grow my hopefuls to four fives, give me two tokens, and also two one one counters. I'm just lucky my opponent hasn't found the Thousand Moon Smithy, because if that ever came out, I'd just be dead. But now they can use Oswald Fiddlebender to their will. They can sack off their gnome and grab, like, whatever to drop, patchwork, whatever. They should have Skrelv in there, in their deck, to protect uh, Oswald. They get a glass casket off that. That's so obnoxious, man. This is so incredibly obnoxious. Mech Titan Core. Through two. Turn to a 2 4. So it's basically like, um, what is that card in modern that you used to see play in black white tokens where you, it was a land that did that but made a demon? Ormondal? Forget what it's called. What happened to my whole entire board? <laughs> Dude, their deck is so obnoxious. I'm asking them if they have a list. I'm asking them if it's a Thousand Moon Smithy deck and if they got a list. They said they're gonna DM me on Twitter, so thank you so much. Okay, so I don't think my opponent got to see my roaming throne which is unfortunate because we got to see a lot of their new cards. Did they get to see my roaming throne? I don't think they did. But yeah, like uh, the first round we lost to Mana Screw and they just killed off momentum. Been dying to Mana Screw a lot today, unfortunately. And you know, um, putting in more clunkier cards and putting in four drops definitely doesn't help with that. Which is why the human's deck is very low to the ground. 22 lands, a lot of one drops, a lot of two drops. So it doesn't have that problem because it's meant to be aggressive. But when the roaming throne comes down, it hits like a nuclear bomb in some situations. Like when you have the hopefuls out, 
and the the counters you just train up like crazy and suddenly out of nowhere you're smacking for like 15 or more damage oh let's continue the pokemon quiz Alrighty, uh, we were on the legends, so let's go to the pseudo legends. Dano, Zuelis, Hydreigon. Uh, this is the only gen with two pseudos, by the way. So we've got Axu, Fracture, Haxorus. And then Ponyard, Bisharp, Selgor, Shelmet, Carablast, S. Cavalier, Joltik. Galvantula, Clink Clang, Clink Clang, Dynamo, Electric, Electros, Palpatode, Size, Metode, Temple, Girder, Conkelder, Timber, Sock, Throw, Aloe, Mamola, Bufalant, Maractus, Sigilyph, Yamask, uh, Kafa, Grigus, Darumaka, Darmanitan, Scraggy, Scrafty. Um, Russell, Webble, Levani, Swaddle, Swadloon, Cottony, Wim. Sikot, Petalil, Lilligant, Scolipede, which has been making waves in the furry scene, by the way. I don't know how, but it has been. Uh, Venipede, Whirlipede, Braviary, Rufflet, um, Vullaby, Mandibuzz, Durant, Heat more. Ducklet. Swana. Mian Fu. Mian Shao. Oh, Mian Shao. Zorua. Zoroark. Drillbur. Excadrill. Frillish. Jellicent. Baskalin. Vanillish. Vanillite, Vanillux, Cryogonal, Bertic, Cub Chew, Stunfisk. Okay, pause. Got our uh, fourth round here against French Fry. French Fry 3. That is a one lander. What is with the mana screw today? Jeez. All right, we'll keep this one. Toss away one of our hopefuls. Play hopeful. They mulligan to six as well. Overgrown tomb. Beetle push, okay. Luminarch's nice. Land War Elves, oh boy. All right, well, let's go Hopeful and Dolly's a tenant. I was gonna Brutal Cathar one of their Mana Darks, which might have been the smarter play, but I don't know. It's gonna go for the aggro play. Um, yeah, whatever. Let's just take up on itself. But if it dies next turn to something, I'm going to regret putting the counter on itself. And they scoop it up. I guess I had too much aggression there and they realized their hand was pretty, pretty dead. 
All right, so I don't know what they're on. Could be like a Planeswalker deck. Um, Brutal Cathar, not the worst. I feel like Wedding Announcement may be good here, even though they could have Abrupt Decay. But their deck could be pretty controlly. I don't know. I probably should just run it back until I know exactly what they're on. So I'm going to do that. Two lander, but it does have ossification, does have a one and a two drop. Let's keep it. I feel like Thalia could be good here. They have like a bunch of walkers and removal spells. Is it literally just Golgari Elves? Just Coco Elves. Steel Leaf? Marwin? Fight rigging. Okay, I see you. Fight rigging is so good. It's a mini... Citadel Siege. All right, I'll go Thalia here. Slow him down a bit. It's going to be a big old creature, right? Ronos. I can get a nice hearty swing in here. It doesn't fight our creature, right? Yeah. Oh, power seven or greater. Now it gets the free card. What's it going to be? Is it going to be like Galta? Is it the new Galta? It was a languish. No way. Okay, well, now at least I can cast my ossifications. Get rid of rotting Regisaur. Hopefully they just completely petered out and just hopefully they're breaking now because they, they're in top deck mode. It's pretty big, but it can't attack. All right, Brutal Cathar, which maybe we should have waited on Brutal Cathar till after we played Roaming Throne. I love fight rigging. <laughs> Fetal push, dang it. Okay, we can go Roaming Throne now. On humans. Thoughtsies, no, there goes my ossification. I needed that to deal with whatever was going to turn on Ronos. That sucks. All right, attack for four. We're getting pretty close to lethal. On humans. So now we have tripled up triggers. So hopefully we can find a Luminarch Aspirin or Thali's Attendant or something like that. Siege Veteran, perhaps. Adeline, perhaps. Okay, now that thing's going to be big enough for Ronas to swing. Oh, ossification, you say. Let's just get rid of Ronas now, get rid of the threat. You got something. They're pumping up the, the elf so it can threaten to block.
Is it worth it? Getting for four? I don't think so. Just pass. Plus, I want another chance to top deck like a tripled up ability. Because <laughs> that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity to see. Pungent Hammer Skull. Or pu Pugnacious. Has stun counters. I remember this card. Oh, there we go. There's, a, there's an ability. So we get to double this up. All right, put a counter here. And then put two counters on this guy. Okay, so if we attack with everything, they're going to use this Pugnacious to eat that, and then they're going to chump this and take three. I don't like that. I'm going to wait. Oh my goodness. Push. Dang it. They're finding the goods. They can come back in this game. Werewolf pack leader. Well, at least they're not going to be able to attack. Um, I mean, they can attack here with the Pugnacious, right? They don't have another dinosaur. Now I'm getting flooded. Is it worth trading off the throne for this? I don't think so. I don't think so. <sighs> we just got to wait to draw like a Thaw's attendant or something. And Adeline. Another one. Now we're starting to see the spice come out. I like what I'm seeing from that uh, artifact deck to this deck. Oh, now the art's present. Adeline, okay, I'll take it. By attack, I am making three one ones. They would eat that, eat that, eat that. Yeah, it's just not good. I can't really attack here. What if I attack with just this one one? I wouldn't really do much. Really wouldn't do much. It's hard to keep up with that fight rigging. Oh my goodness. You gotta be kidding me. Oh no. Well, I drew another roaming throne. That's brutal. Brutal as a Cathar. Um, I think we have to just take this. I have the game seven to seven. I think we should have traded off for the pugnacious thing when we had the chance to. 
All right, Adeline. Unfortunately, the creatures enter attacking. Okay, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to attack with this one now. That's what I expected. They could have easily just blocked from those one ones. They're down to four. Oh wait, I'm dead. <laughs> well, not if they don't swing out. They did. Yeah, that was rough. The double languish. Our right, well, brutal Cathar for sure is coming in. A uh, portable hole can deal with the mana dork, slow them down a bit. It's game three, I believe. Because the first game they scoop too quickly. We need to get hopeful out and like blow up fight rigging. That's what we need to do. Because that's the only reason we lost that game. Um, wedding announcement. Maybe. I'm thinking about it. Looks like Thalia is not going to be great. So let's just bring in wedding announcement instead. Portable hole doesn't hit a whole lot of threatening stuff from their side. That's a one lander. Again, mana screw. <laughs> That's a two lander. So we're going to have to keep this one and toss away. Um, Dude, what do I toss away? Because I don't want to lose my ossification of Brutal Cathar. I guess Roaming Throne's too clunky right now. I wouldn't mind trading off for a Mana Dork, though, so I think I'll offer the trade here. I wouldn't mind trading. Okay, they're just going to take it. They have so many fat threats that I don't think I'd, I'd bolt the birds. I don't think I'd bolt the birds here. I think I just got to wait and save this for something bigger. Maybe I should have bolted the birds because getting out Adeline there would have been a huge, huge, like, momentum swing in my favor. And then I have the backup ossification or the Brutal Cathar. So I should have done that. So for now, I'm just going to do Brutal Cathar. The pugnacious guy. I wouldn't be surprised if they had Nullhide Ferox in their deck. Okay, well, they have good options off this Thoughtseize. They take my ossification. Okay, that's fine. I think I would have rather had the Adeline. Right, they got Werewolf Pack Leader. Recruitment Officer is great. I can start digging for some value. All right, pass the turn. Do they have fight rigging to follow up with here? Nothing. Okay, well, that's good. It's a good draw. I think I may just swing out here. They're going to have to trade off. Okay, they just scoop it up. I was going to say they're going to have to trade off Werewolf Pack Leader for Kytheon um, so that it doesn't flip. But we got there just way too much aggression at the start there. And that is now two and two. We could potentially go positive here. All right, on to the last game. And maybe, just maybe, this will be the first video where we can actually complete this Pokemon quiz. So let's uh, resume it. All right, we were at the woods. Oh, we already found a game. Dang it. Dang it. 
All right, option 686 is going to be our final round opponent. We are on the play. Show me some spice, opponent, please. Gigantha is their companion. That's a two lander, but we'll keep it. We just got two spicy matchups in a row. Can we get a third spicy matchup in a row, please? All right, hopeful, because we can train up with Thalia. Another Mana Dork deck? Oh, oh, it's Boggles. I said I wanted to see something spicy, not something lame. <laughs> All right, uh, well, Thalia is going to be pretty excellent here. Thalia could potentially win for us. What's the two mana Enchantress chick? I forget her name. Two mana when you cast an enchantment, draw a card. So if they have that in their deck, we can eat that. Or like SRAM or something, we can eat that with Ossification. Artouche. It's got first strike, so they can first strike off Orthalia, but I wouldn't mind trading. Ooh. Okay. Um, I might just go double one drop. Let, let's just attack here, see if there's any blocks. And then if they don't, I'll just go double one drop. I mean, I'm doing double one drop regardless since I already went to combat and this triggers a combat. So I'm already committed. They are going to double block Thalia. That's fine. We both got first strike. Yeah, that's that's a fine trade. Um, I kind of just want to go double one drop for the aggression. Because they don't have a creature to put Auras on right now. I mean, that doesn't really count. They could do another one and then put an R on it, but it's not going to be too detrimental right now, I don't think. Let's just go with double one drops and try to stay aggressive. Next turn, we can train up uh, this guy with our already trained one. It feels so refreshing to be back on White Weenie. I love this archetype. It's basically the same as playing Zoo or Stompy. Ethereal armor. Okay, it's fine. Suit that up all you want. I'm just going to ossification it. Give it more. Give it more. Give it another ethereal. Give it a griff spoon. Anything. Yes, this is so good for us. This is so good. All right, I'll take five. And I think this spells defeat for our opponent here. Ossification, deal with the creature token, train up my hopeful, get in for six, put them to seven, and now they are super far behind. Toadstool Admir. This guy's got Ward 2. That's a cool addition to Boggles and Pioneer. I didn't know this guy existed. That's awesome. He's got trample. I can't even read what he does because the results are in the way. Pay four and put a counter on him. I like that. So that kind of just makes Pioneer Boggles more possible. I, I like that addition. All right, so Portable Hole can kill that frog, dude. But I have plenty of removal already. But that's going to be better than Ossification or like Brutal Cathar, I believe. Um... Deafening Silence can make them only play one enchantment per turn, so that could be useful. And then, um, what else? I guess that's it. Brutal Cathar's a little slow. And then we can cut one clunky thing here. Like one Roaming Throat, I believe.
Okay, finally a good looking balanced hand with one, two, three drop. Like, I don't think we've had a, a start with one, two, three drop yet today. Screlv. Even Screlv in there too. It's awesome. Deafening Silence. Do I start on Deafening Silence? Uh, I don't believe so. Not yet. Let's just start on Hopeful. <sighs> Portable. Okay, well, good thing I didn't play. Oh, it definitely can't hit an enchantment. Oh, non land permanent, it can. Got the cartouche on there. All right, I would like some removal. Now I think is a good time for deafening silence. All right, so only one enchantment per turn for them. It makes it more manageable. I'm gonna die a lot slower now. <laughs> Sram? Nope, all that glitters. Okay, it's getting a little spooky. Take it. Adeline, make best use of the mana. All right, pass. I need to draw two removal spells. I need to deal with Skrull first and then the warrior token. Cartouche is like a real big enabler for these decks. Very good for resilience purposes. I think we might be dead next turn. All right, they pass the Coco. Okay, um, Luminarch. Oh, he's a tenant. But then I can't really attack because the Skrell can give pro white. So this is just really bad. Okay, I can, I can, uh, put a counter here so I can actually afford to block the warrior next turn so that they'd have to give protection and tap out so I can potentially draw an answer and live on two or one or three so long as I don't draw any enchantments here I feel like the odds are not in our favor right now not in the slightest I don't know what we can do we just have to deal with Skrelv that's it we just need Skrelv off the table next turn so they are giving pro protection from white. So their shield's down now. So I have the opportunity to top deck removal. Wait, I just realized I could have attacked with Adeline last turn. It didn't matter, they would have just tapped and give protection. But then I could have gotten in with my 1-1, one -one, but then the Skrelv would have declared blocks on that, Never mind. Did not draw the answer. So I think that is defeat. Unless there's a way I can assemble lethal here. Can I get lethal? Let's see, let's play Kytheon, get a counter on Thalia's attendant. Unfortunately, I'm one short of activating Lockthwain. Put it into play. All right. 
get a counter on itself. And let's just swing all out. Get a human, get another counter on Dolly's Lieutenant. All right, so how much damage is this? Are they forced to chump? Please tell me this is enough. I don't think it's enough. I think that's 17, 18, that's 18 damage. Not quite enough. Yep, they just take it. Well, I want to activate recruitment officer just to say that I did. <laughs> so let's uh let's activate recruitment officer and then scoop. All right, now we're on the play though, which should be much better. Is Daphne silenced the play? Because it felt like I really needed to deal with Skrull there, so maybe I need the Brutal Cathars. Bring in a couple of them. Okay, so two portable holes, two Cathars, four ossifications. That should be enough removal. I believe. This is the last game. Last game of the day. See if it's enough. And we get there. Uh, sure. Sure. Oh, wait, we have two Aganjos. They legend rule each other. No, that's why I don't like to run multiple of the legend lands. But when I was looking at the other lists of, of humans, they all ran two Aganjos. It makes sense. You can just play one and then just use the other to kill something. Just treat it as if it was a removal spell, like a sandblast or something. Skrell. Okay, at least I have the answer for that. I don't need to deal with it right now, though, so let's just get out Luminarch Aspiring and start reaping the value. Get it out there, put a counter on itself. SRAM. Okay, I definitely want to deal with both of these things. They're going to give pro white. Oh, they didn't. They did not give pro right, but I'm I'm legend rolling myself. So now I can just uh, portable hole on SRAM here so they don't draw any cards. I'm surprised I didn't give pro white there. That's a huge swing in my favor because now I get to attack for three and kill their SRAM. But now I don't have three lands, so I can't play Adeline. I would like to get out Thalia really badly now because it's about time they're going to start throwing out a bunch of enchantments. They're just going to play a creature and start suiting it. Oh, never mind. They're not going to play a creature. They killed my portable hole to get back strap. Okay, I need, I need to get down Thalia now. They're just going to start storming off Auras. Branch Loft, please only play one. Don't play two. Please play all that glitters. Just all that glitters. All I wanted was a Pepsi. Just one Pepsi, and she wouldn't give it to me. Just a Pepsi. Toadstool Admirer. Okay. Just play a Glade Cover Scout. Come on. Audacity. Dang it. It's gonna get real bad real fast. I need removal. But I also want to play Adeline here. What do I do? Adeline's aggressive, but Thalia's disruptive.
Okay, let's go Thalia, because it can threaten to block the Toadstool. Put a counter on Luminarchus Byron, so if they want to kill it, they have to double block, which I wouldn't mind. So let's just get in for four here. It's going to be a close game. Once Ram starts drawing cards, you know it's going to be tough. But the most enchantments they can play here is just two, because of Thalia. Okay. Another audacity. They're splitting up the love, though. They're not committing to one creature. I guess it is smart to commit to the hexproof creature now, though. Just commit everything to that so I can't deal with it. It's been so long since I fought modern boggles that I just completely forgot and remembered right now that Daybreak Coronet exists. <laughs> I haven't seen Daybreak Coronet in years. And another Skrelv. So now is my only chance to deal with SRAM. Skrelv definitely makes things a lot tougher, and looks like I did not find it. This is really bad. <laughs> this is really, really bad. What do I do? Audacity is going to draw cards. I feel like they have no shame in just trading off. I'll put the counter on Thalia. And then I think I'm going to attack with everything. Putting the counter on Thalia makes it so they can't like double block effectively with SRAM and Toadstool. So now if they block with both, I get to kill both. I feel like they may use Toadstool and SRAM to double block Luminarch and then just trade off um, Skrell for Recruitment Officer and just try to commit to Glade Cover. They just take it all, but they're dead. Oh no, they're going to blocks. Never mind. Okay, they're eating the human. They are chumping Luminarchus Bard and drawing a card. I need their, their glade cover to just not get any form of lifelink. Just no lifelink, please. What is the Celestia card that gives uh, lifelink? It's a three drop. Um, it's like the new Armadillo Cloak. What's it called again? Does anybody in chat remember? It's like a one, a white and a green aura. The three drop aura in Celestia. And it gives the creature like lifelink and trample. And like plus two, plus two, I believe. Like that's what I need them to not have, whatever that card is. It's like from Ra Return to Ravnica. It's an old card. No, I just I just mentioned it was it's the new Armadillo Cloak. Not Armadillo Cloak's the old one. It's got, like, reprinted in a new card in Celestia in Return of Ravnica. They're down to one. Okay, so they cannot pay a life with Brushland. They can only use Brushland for colorless. And uh, they, they need to really just go off with Sram and Glade cover here. Unflinching Courage. That's the one. All right, so exclamation point card. Unflinching all right, Ethereal Armor is a start. Yeah, it gives plus two, plus two, Trample, and Lifelink. That's what I need them to not have. Thalia is really putting in the work here to make sure I don't get overwhelmed by Auras right now. And Adeline making that pesky 1-1 Haster is really, really threatening at the moment. 
they need to get, yeah, they, they scoop it up. They needed to get some form of vigilance and one more blocker to be able to live. And I was going to top deck planes. So yeah, um, we got there. That was scary, but we did fight three spicy decks in a row there. That's what I like to see. Pioneers on top of it. Modern this week had nothing. Nobody was playing new stuff in modern at all, except I think the Jun player might've had that a new Jun charm. I don't know if that was new though. I don't remember. I didn't take a close look at it. I don't think it was new. But uh, yeah, Pioneer definitely a lot spicier at the moment. So um, let's go to this scene here and pull up this thing here and talk about it. So we saw the problems of this build today. We, we had a lot of mana screw today. Um, just, you know... Even though it is a 23 land deck and Mana Screw should not have happened, it somehow did. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's the deck's fault. I think it's a fine distribution and a fine build. I just think it was just luck of the draw. I think, honestly, it was just it was just uh, bad timing just to judge the deck on. It was just a bad day. Um... So I think the deck's honestly fine. Like, I think we have a nice distribution of curve. Like, um, let me see if I can do this here. Is it, uh, uh, pile view? Yeah, pile view. Here's our curve. And I think that's a fine curve. Like, uh, cause we only need one, one drop just to start off the game. So eight's a fine number, but I think going upwards of 10 is not a bad idea either. Or like nine, just, you got to have like one, like one, one drop in your opener is fine. Cause you just got to start your game on a good note, you know? So eight's like, okay, I would say, but you really want to have a follow-up play. You really want something on turn two. And we have 12 creatures and four removal. Like, I feel like that is a fine distribution and then the haymakers the the nine and the three mana slot that's fine as well and then we're just supporting this by running 23 lands i think it's a very fine curve in my opinion i i think that's great but it's just luck of the draw just luck of the draw today um but the roaming throne was awesome the roaming throne really put in the work whenever it came out except that one time but yeah, when you slam it down there and then immediately double up this trigger or that trigger or this trigger or that trigger, it just, or like even this trigger just out of nowhere is just amazing. Or yeah, just following up with Cathar after that even is just really, really awesome. Um, does it belong in humans? It's like a meta option from now on. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of, like 60 40 in favor of yes i think it it's just if i ever went up against humans i would be terrified if i was like i would always be fearing a roaming throne when it got to like turn four i'd be like if they have the roaming throne this is very bad for me <laughs> that's how i would feel because it's like put so much threatening stuff on the table while also being hard to kill because it has ward two like i think it's just such a bomb because like it like what what other human would you play at the four mana slot that's even bombier than roaming throne name one like what would be better than roaming throne at the four mana slot for humans i don't think there is a better option than roaming throne like this thing's crazy but it could also be good like like i said like we saw our like patchwork automaton like it'd be cool with like some kind of constructs affinity kind of stuff going on there like maybe try that out in modern i think this card's really cool I think it has a lot of potential um, for, for Pioneer, probably. For Modern, it may be a little bit too slow, but for, for Pioneer, for sure. Um, very brewable card, and I like it. Let's go back to our card view. There we go. I prefer that view. It's easier to see the cards. So that's going to do for this one. Uh, let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below. For those watching on Twitch, stay tuned so we can raid somebody. For those watching on YouTube, thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment because interacting like that really helps out the algorithm. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We do Modern every Monday and Pioneer every Friday, and we're messing with a lot of Ixalan cards. So if that's your kind of thing, I hope you stick around. If you want to check out the gameplay live on Twitch, we do the streams every single Saturday afternoon. Twitch link down below if you want to go and check it out. Hope to see you there. 
And uh, if you want to check out my second YouTube channel based around the game Destiny 2, link to that. It's also down below. And with that, I'll catch you in the next Ixalan Brew video on Monday. Peace.